Hey everybody, Brett from Astartes Gaming here, uh, coming at you with my uh, impressions or thoughts on Kingdom Come Deliverance. Uh, this is basically going to be an informal review, um, but in short, my thoughts on the game are that I absolutely love it, uh, and that's why I decided to go ahead and make this. Um, I'm being slowly persuaded into actually putting up some gameplay on the channel as well, so um, you guys may have that to look forward to as well. But uh, in the meantime, the gameplay you're seeing behind uh, this commentary is uh, thanks to a fellow YouTuber by the name of Danks564. Um, he's a friend of the channel. He always swings by to leave comments and whatnot. And I watch uh, some of his videos as well. And uh, so I wanted to thank him for uh, giving me some gameplay footage because I haven't actually recorded any yet. I have um, beaten the game all the way through once and started on a second playthrough. And I figured I would go ahead and give you guys my thoughts on the game uh, in full so that you kind of know what to expect from it. There's a lot of, um, I, I don't know if I can call it misinformation, but misleading information about the game out there, especially from um, some of the bigger reviewers that you know, it doesn't really seem like they spent a lot of time with the game. Um, and some of the things that they have said about it are, um, again, misleading. So um, let's go ahead and jump on in. Uh, I'm going to start with... Uh, things I really like about the game and then I'll move into things that uh, maybe aren't so great and then I'll just kind of recap uh, my thoughts at the end. Um, I'm going to try to keep this fairly short and sweet but uh, you guys know me I tend to ramble a little bit so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, um, so this game has pulled me in and immersed me uh, in a way that no other game outside of um, probably Skyrim has ever has ever done. Um, I was absolutely hooked from the moment I got in. The story is good. It's not the best, uh, but it's more than serviceable. And um, it definitely went in a way that I didn't expect. Not that the ending is some like big rug pull or anything, but um, just the things that they have you do throughout, throughout the story are, are kind of interesting and not at all what I was um, expecting going in. Um, what else? Let's see. So the combat is fantastic. Obviously, that was a major focal point for this game uh, in development, and I think it came through fantastically. Uh, it may look very complex at first, and if you're playing on console, it very well might be, because it, to me at least, feels very natural on PC with a mouse, but I can imagine where, um, as, as we see uh, Dank run, Dank's running into a, a little bit of a bug there on the staircase. Um, there are bugs. I'll get into that later. But um, on PC, the combat feels very natural, um, and I find myself going out of my way to look for fights in the game just to experience more of it, especially um, duels against particularly strong characters, just because, especially in one-on-one -on -one combat, the, the mechanics really, really shine. And you can see him again. This, this one staircase in the game is... Um, a little bit buggy and I don't think I've run into any others that were like that but this particular one in uh, Ratai uh, is just awful and uh, I'm not sure what it is about that one but um, let's keep moving and again I'll address the bugs later so um, another thing that really blew me away with this game is the the sense of progression you start out as an absolute scrub and I think that's what frustrates a lot of people with this game is um, it, it's actually very difficult at the start because you are not good at really anything and your uh, performance in game reflects that. If you get into a sword fight, um, for, for example, there's a very early part of the game where you are being pursued by a lone human warrior and um, if you turn around and decide to fight him, despite having a fairly good weapon in your hands, uh, you will just get absolutely destroyed. And that is because uh, Henry not having any combat skills yet just really isn't up to the task. Uh, again, even though he has a, a pretty fancy weapon with him at the time. Uh, whereas later on in the um, game, for example, like, you know, late in the story, uh, by that point, you can probably duel uh, up to maybe three of those you know, human warriors, uh, without all that much trouble. And so it, it just really gives you a sense of growth. Uh, but again, can be a little bit frustrating at the beginning because, um, for example, lockpicking, 
their um, even even easy locks can be a struggle. But as you level up, um, and in my first playthrough, I did a lot of lock picking, got my skill up to the maximum, and I was able to lock pick the hardest locks in the game in a matter of like seconds, um, where people would literally turn their backs uh, to talk to somebody else, and I could pick a, a very hard lock before they turned around again. Um, so I think that's something that people are misunderstanding uh, because there's been a lot of, you know, talk like, oh, lock picking is too hard. Um, this is too hard. That's too hard. It's not that it's too hard. It's just that you suck at it and you need to get better. And I don't necessarily mean that as like offense to the player. Um, but in, in a way, it is sort of directed at the player, but it's also directed at the character. The character needs to get better. And as you improve your character, you also improve those skills in yourself and get better. I've definitely noticed in my second playthrough, um, even though Henry is not particularly great at certain things, because I have gotten a little bit better at the mechanics, um, they go a little bit smoother. But I have also noticed a big difference in you know playing my late game character who can steamroll through just about anything and then coming back into this early character and realizing, oh, wow, I don't have that ability anymore. I can't uh, do perfect blocks yet. I can't um, repost or whatever uh, every attack that somebody throws my way. And so I think it's difficult to get a sense for it when you are playing through from beginning to end just because there is such a long expanse of time that you... Uh, don't really feel the the change immediately, but again, going back into a second playthrough, it's it's a huge difference. And so I highly recommend um, if you play through the game once to maybe jump back in and just see how far you've grown and how far your character's grown, because it is pretty staggering actually. And that's, again, something I really enjoy about the game. Um, I also really like, uh, I'm not going to say all of the, the mini games and stuff, but the attention to detail in them is quite nice. Um, you don't have to do any of them if you don't want to. For example, sharpening your sword, you have the, um, the what's it? I always forget what they're called. It, it's like a whetstone wheel thing um, where you can actually sharpen your sword on it and you have to you know adjust angles and pressures and pedal it to make it go. Um, you can do all that if you want, and it's fairly involved, and there is a skill to it. Um, your character also has a skill regarded to that, and as he gets better, uh, you'll be more effective at it, but it also requires a bit of skill on your part. Um, or if you don't care, which in my first playthrough, I, I really didn't find that particular mini game to you know catch my interest, so I just skipped it, and every time I went to town, I just had a blacksmith fix it for me. Um, you can do that, or you can just buy... Uh, blacksmith and armor kits and repair your stuff that way it's it's that simple uh, so you have a variety of ways to deal with these things you don't have to go through the mini games but they are there if you enjoy doing them the one that i liked the most was the alchemy system because uh myself being uh, somebody who studies biology uh, a little bit of chemistry a little bit of physics um going through sort of the process that they have in the alchemy system where you have to you know grind something up with a mortar and pestle and then add it to like maybe a, a water base and then simmer it and then add something else and boil it. Uh, it. It's a cool mechanic. And again, it's it's something that you don't really have to do if you don't want to. There are a few quests where um, it will certainly benefit you to at least make an attempt. Um, but I believe there's even a perk that basically allows you to auto craft potions as long as you have the ingredients. So again, if it's, if it's something you don't enjoy, uh, you don't you're not really strong-armed into doing it anyways. Um, and I really like that about the game. Moving into uh, the survival mechanic mechanics, this is something that I was on the fence about before I played the game. And a lot of people seem to hate, but or maybe not hate, but just don't particularly enjoy. Um, I don't have a problem with this, and I actually find it to make the game uh, more immersive than it would be otherwise. They are not at all intrusive. Um, you do have to sleep to you know rest your character, but the time scale doesn't make that um, a hindrance really. It feels natural. The day cycles are fairly long compared to games like Skyrim or um, you know other open world RPGs to the point where um, I, I haven't really 
found myself, you know, being like, God damn it, I have to, you know, go to bed again. Um, especially since being as realistic as this game is, the night cycles are very, very dark. Um, even with a torch, you can't see particularly far in any direction. And so um, it, it's almost, it, it feels natural to be like, okay, you know, it's, it's dark. I can't see anything. I don't want to fight in the dark. So let's go ahead and turn in. I'll rest my character. Uh, I'll get that auto save and then we can, you know, start fresh in the morning. And um, as far as food goes, I have found my character um, mostly overfed because food is everywhere. It's not at all a struggle to find it. Every bandit you kill has a couple snacks on him. Um, there are these pots full of like orange gruel. Literally everywhere, every house you go into will have one. And so um, basically at the start of every day after my character wakes up, I pop into a house or even in most cities they're out in the open and you can just eat from these pots and that's pretty much all the food you'll ever need for the day so um as as far as those survival mechanics go they are not at all intrusive and um again i, I find them to be immersive because you you do sort of feel the days wind down and every time you wake up it does feel like a fresh start um and as i mentioned the thing about the auto saves let's move into that this isn't necessarily a positive, but it is not a negative by any means. And I think a lot of people have made this into more than it is regarding the save system. Um, it's been blown absolutely out of proportion. There are so many ways to save your game. It's not at all a problem. You can see he just got a save there for completing a quest. Every time you advance a quest... Um, in some meaningful way, you're generally going to get an autosave. There are times where you don't, but for the most part, any major progress you make is going to get you an autosave. Um, anytime you sleep for, I don't know if there's a minimum time, but every time you sleep for the most part, as far as I can tell, there's an autosave. And then of course you can manually save with the save your schnapps. And now I've, I've read some reviews where like, Oh, the only way to save is to buy these ridiculously expensive potions that are severely limited. And that's absolute bullshit. Um, the, the Savior Schnapps are everywhere. You can loot them out of chests. Every um, general goods trader carries three of them. And uh, for example, in uh, Rate, Ratai, which is the town that you're seeing... Uh, Danks run around in right now, there is at least two merchants that stock three of them at a time. So you could potentially buy six in one visit to that town. And they are not particularly expensive. They are about the same price as every other potion, which is to say somewhere between uh, probably 70 to 100 groschen, depending on the merchant and your relation with them, which is uh, in comparison less than a tenth of your average armor piece. So if you went into that uh, swordsmith right there and tried to buy a decent weapon, you'd be paying roughly 10 times what you'd be paying for a savior schnapps. And uh, 10 groschen by the mid game is absolutely nothing. Uh, every bandit you, that you kill is probably gonna net you a minimum of about 500 groschen just off of the, the loot you take from him. And so if you kill five bandits, you've already paid for probably more savior schnapps than you'll need for a single playthrough. Um, I have, uh, especially my first playthrough, uh, I played very save scummy because I wanted to experience everything. And, uh, I basically ran around with like 15 savior schnapps in my inventory. And anytime I wanted to try something, I popped one, I did it. If I didn't like what happened, I reloaded and I tried it a different way. And there was really no obstruction for me to do that. I had plenty of money. Um, by the time I finished the game, my character had like a hundred thousand groschen and, very little to spend it on because I already had the best armor I could have possibly gotten, the best weapons. Um, there's actually, and I'll get into this in the negatives, but um, there's a bit of a late game economy issue. Um, I wouldn't call it an issue. There's just not a lot to spend your money on after you get the stuff you want. So, um, yeah, as far as the safe stuff goes, it's been completely blown out of proportion. It's not a big deal at all. You can keep as many potions as you want on you. Um, I don't know where they got a limit of three from. I, I literally have two save files right now. Both characters have more than 10 on them. And uh, they they aren't that expensive, especially compared to um, 
uh, like armor, weapons, anything that you're going to be using on a regular basis uh, is going to cost you minimum a thousand groschen, if not two, three thousand groschen. And these potions are like 70. Uh, they, they cost as much as like two, three lockpicks. It's not a big deal at all. Um, so what else? What else? The scenery is absolutely fantastic. The map is great. Uh, it feels very organic, and that's because they basically just scanned in this area in real life and then added back in the historic elements, uh, many of which are actually still there. Um, I, a lot of the stuff you can see on Google Maps, m I think most of the castles are gone or severely deteriorated, but uh, for example, there's a couple quarries in the game, that are, um, or a quarry in the game that is still there in real life, or not in real life, in modern times. Um, I believe the monastery in uh, the, I, I want to say Sasau, yeah, the southwestern city, town, whatever, Sasau, uh, has a large monastery in it, and I believe that is still there. Um, so it, it feels organic because it is, because it, it's based on real life. Um, the area is actually very, very small. It's like roughly a county in size, but it, it feels natural. You can travel from one side to the other in fairly, fairly quick time. It's probably five minutes of you know real time um, in game it's maybe a couple hours but you can travel around from you know the, the various extremes without too much trouble uh, but you know it it does feel like you're traveling great distances especially because of the uh, heavy wooded landscape um, it's difficult to see beyond all the very tall trees and so it kind of expands the game or the map a little bit more than it would if it was all just flat land. But I really enjoy the map. It feels very immersive. It feels very real. Um, and it's I, I've spent a lot of time, several hours, just kind of wandering it and taking in the sights, exploring, see what there was around. And that moves me into my next point, that uh, I, I do really enjoy the uh, various random encounters that you come across. Some of them can get a bit repetitive, though. And... Um, You'll probably see the same ones over and over again, but upon the like first experience, they are um, quite enjoyable and uh, fairly diverse. Some of them are interesting in the way that you can get very good gear um, earlier than you probably would be able to otherwise uh, if you carry them out. Um, other ones will kind of test your speech skills. Um, some of them will actually make you think in real life by answering riddles. The riddles aren't particularly difficult, but, um, you know, there, there's no speech check or anything to get through those. You actually have to figure them out yourself. Um, so that was kind of cool. Um, there's, you know, various duels against random people where you can test your skills and, again, get some decent loot out of it if you're successful. Or maybe just a couple extra coins by winning a bet. And uh, overall, I enjoyed them. I would recommend... Uh, especially if you've already played the game a little bit, to check out mods that uh, weight certain ones over others so that you'll get less of the uh, running into merchants and stuff that get kind of stale and more of the uh, bandits jumping you on the road and trying to you know kill you type thing. Um, there are quite a few mods available for the game already on the Nexus. Um, so that's worth checking out too, especially if you've already played through. I, I would recommend playing through the game once unmodded. Um, I wouldn't say that there's any mods that are absolutely 100% necessary, um, even for a first-time playthrough, but there are some that are very convenient. And so if you're playing through again, it's nice to have them just to iron out a few things that you might be tired of by the time you're making your second you know, jump in. Uh, so I don't know that I have any, I'm sure I have more positive things to say, but that was the main points that I wanted to touch on, and I've already talked a lot longer than I intended to, so let's move into some of the negatives uh, before this video turns into an hour-long thing. So, um, the biggest one is is got to be bugs and performance in general. Um, I haven't experienced any true game-breaking bugs. Um, there are a couple quests that if you do not go about them correctly, or if you initiate them too late, uh, can be incompletable. And that is a shame, but um, it, it's far from game breaking. I don't think there's any main quest that um, 
you can get absolutely stuck on. I, I may be wrong. I might have just been lucky in my playthrough. But um, I haven't experienced anything game-breaking. Game there have been a few times where uh, I, I got stuck and I had to reload a save from maybe an hour earlier and play through a bit. And I realized, like, oh, I did this first, but I should have gone and done this first. And the quest kind of wasn't sure what to do because I went out of order. Um, and obviously, if they had had more time to code these quests, um, they probably could have, you know, built in more contingencies for things like that. But um, for the most part, it didn't really bother me. There's also um, some weird foliage on the map. Uh, certain bushes um, are like brick walls, basically. You can't get through them. And uh, it's, it's a bit annoying. I wish they would just make all the terrain or all the foliage passable so you could just run right through it, uh, especially on horseback. But they're consistent. It's, it's not like one particular bush uh, can't be run through, but then the same bush over here can. Uh, it's, it's the same bushes every time, so eventually you just figure it out and you know not to try to run through those bushes. Um, I, I read a review where somebody was making a big deal about it, and um, I mean, honestly, if you can't just figure out that, okay, this bush can't be passed through, and I'm not going to keep trying to run through it, it's, you know, you get over it pretty quick. Uh, it, it is still annoying, and it would be nice if they fix it, maybe just got rid of the collision meshes for it completely. Um, I would be perfectly happy with that. Maybe a modder can do it. But it was far from game-breaking. Uh, what else? Okay. Um, regarding the story, I enjoyed pretty much all of it. I would say that the ending wasn't entirely satisfying, though. Um, not that it was a bad ending, it just didn't quite close things neatly. It almost felt like they were building toward uh, either a sequel or um, maybe like a chapter two that they're going to release later as hopefully not DLC, but um, it, it definitely felt that way. It was very open-ended, and uh, if it does mean that they're you know planning a sequel, uh, fantastic, but I would like some sort of closure for this game. And there is a little bit, just not not a satisfying amount. And that's my biggest complaint regarding the story. Um, otherwise, I, I really enjoyed it. I found it to be fairly unique. Um, there are some common tropes in there, as as always, a couple of cliches. But um, it was interesting. I was, I was definitely uh, compelled to keep going. Every time I did a story quest, I really wanted to jump into the next one and, you know, see what was happening, you know. Um, especially since it's, they, I don't want to spoil anything, but they have you sort of working your way through this mystery type thing, and you're almost playing a detective at certain points, um, but, you know, it was definitely hard for me to put the game down, you know, it was pretty late at night, and I just keep telling myself, you know, like, one, one more quest, one more quest, um, same, same with the side quest, but the story, especially, because it was very interesting to see where they were taking it and uh, for you to figure out the next piece to the puzzle. That, I guess that's another positive, but um, anyways, uh, finally, I don't know if this is the last one, I might think of another as I'm saying this one, but um, regarding the armor, there is a lot of variety, but um, in particular for the plate armor, I was a bit disappointed with how few options there were. Um, the chest plates are fairly diverse. I think there's, I don't remember exactly how many, I want to say probably like five or six different chest plates that you can wear and they all look, um, at least slightly different, but, um, the leg armor, the chasses or whatever they're called, and then the arm armor for the plate, uh, are all virtually the same, um. I think there's like two variety of leg armor. There, There's several that have different names, but if you equip them, they all look identical. And the same is true for a lot of the um, arm plates. And I found that to be disappointing because some of them don't match the chest plates particularly well or the helmets. And so it, it was difficult to, to aesthetically please myself with a matching set of plate armor uh, because not all of them had... Uh, they may have had a full set in name, but in actual appearance, it, they just didn't quite match up. Um, 
But other than that, the variety is pretty astounding. Um, there's no shortage of if you don't want, you know, uh, strictly plate armor on your arms. There's there's at least two or three different varieties of brigandine. Um, there's some with pauldrons, some without. So yeah, I mean, there's there's pretty staggering variety. It's just for some particular sets that it didn't feel like there was a complete set, and you know, um, if you're uh, kind of anal about your character's appearance, which I spent a lot of time on my character's appearance. Um, uh, it, it was a bit disappointing, but you know, you can't, you can't get everything you want. Um, I think it would be nice. I, I know they're, they're trying to have a, a story centered around a character. Uh, and this is again, something I thought up while I was talking about that. So this is another sort of negative, but it's not that big a deal. I understand their design choice. It's just, it would have been nice to maybe, maybe be able to tweak your character's appearance. Um, I hate citing this game as a good example, but uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, even though it was centered around a specific character, you could, you know, uh, and all the Mass Effects let you do this, actually. Um, with Shepard, you can, you know, change Shepard's appearance if you want. It's still Shepard, but if your Shepard wants to have, you know, this haircut or this face shape, you know, whatever, it's still Shepard. Um, I get why they didn't, uh, do a female protagonist or the option for one, um, because they were trying to stay very historic, historically accurate. And, uh, if you played as a female protagonist in this game and did what you did as Henry, um, a lot of people would probably treat you like absolute shit. And that probably wouldn't be fun. Um, because medieval Europe was pretty sexist. And that's just how it was. Um, so I get from that perspective, if they were going to be historically accurate, it didn't make sense to do that. It is a bit disappointing for, you know, female gam gamers who want to play somebody more representative of themselves. But, um, I, I get that design choice. And, uh, Henry is pretty, pretty open, um, as far as like role play goes, but you are sort of limited. Some of the options, um, dialogue wise, it's difficult to sort of play him as maybe one temperament versus another. Uh, there are times where both dialogue options or all the dialogue options are fairly, um, I don't want to say like honorable, not necessarily honorable, but just kind of like kind and gentle. Um, his personality seems like, like he's a fairly easygoing, just nice person. And there are times where that comes through, even if you want to play like kind of a asshole roguish character. Uh, you can't always do that. There are times where you can, um, especially when it comes to speech checks. There are a variety of ways to do it. Um, and that's actually something I forgot to mention the positives I'll get to in a second. Um, when those come up, you can definitely, uh, you can definitely role play in different ways, depending on how you want to handle situations. But when it comes to the more mundane dialogue where you're not making speech checks and just kind of, you know, exchanging information with people to advance quests or what have you, um, the default character persona kind of comes through and it becomes difficult for you to role play whatever specific character you had in your head. Um, but that said, as I mentioned before, the uh, actual speech check stuff is fantastic. It takes into account quite a few things, um, particularly what you're wearing. And so um, if you wear uh, clothes, all the different clothing items have um, charisma stats, by the way, and your character has a speech and charisma stat as well. Uh, so if you want to be like this hoity-toity, you know, like rich nobleman merchant type, uh, you know, even though your character's a poor blacksmith son, regardless, um, you can put on the fancy clothes and kind of, you know, convince people that way. Um, look, look the part of like a rich person and maybe they'll, you know, believe, believe that you're a noble or whatever. Uh, or you can throw on super heavy armor and make sure it's nice and shiny and intimidate people that way. Uh, or you can just be really good at uh, persuasion and talk your way through stuff. Or if you are really rich, uh, you can just throw a coin at them. You have all those different options. Um, and uh, that's when the game, as far as the role-playing aspect, really shines. Because uh, 
you can sort of build your character a certain way, build his clothing a certain way, and then utilize that to sort of advance your uh, standing with other characters. So that's really cool. Um, and again, I, I'm getting into this video a little bit longer than I intended. So I might end it here, but I, as you can probably tell, I really enjoyed the game. There are, you know, problems, obviously. It's not perfect. But overall, if I had to rate the game, I'd probably give it like an 8.5 out of 10. Um, if they were able to deal with the performance issues and the, um, the bugs and sort of the awkward uh, quest hangups, uh, I, I could give this game maybe even a 10 out of 10. I have not been as drawn into a game uh, as I have with this one since uh, I first played Skyrim. And I ended up playing, uh, I think, about 1,000 hours of Skyrim. So I obviously enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I am... I think sitting around 100 hours for this game, and I plan on playing through uh, at least one more time, and I'm being persuaded by you guys to maybe do a playthrough on the channel as well, so it might be a third. I, I have to decide how I want to do it, though. Uh, if I do, it'll probably strictly be main quest, just because there is so much side quest content and just wandering and discovering and exploring to do that, you know, it would be very difficult to find a a good way to do that on YouTube. Um, but you guys are welcome to give suggestions as to, you know, if I did a Let's Play, what would you like to see? But yeah, those are my thoughts on the game. Um, I really, really enjoy it. I think it's fantastic. Um, I definitely think it's worth picking up if you enjoy RPGs. Um, again, it's not going to really hold your hand. There are tutorials. Um, it'll walk you through most of the mechanics, but it's not going to take it easy on you. Things will be hard at the beginning. You as a person will get better at them, as will your character, and uh, you'll definitely notice the difference by the end. Uh, or certainly if you go back and play it again, you'll see, wow, that used to be really difficult, and now I can, you know, kill four bandits at once, where uh, even even the lo most lowly bandit before could have, you know, killed me single-handedly. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm kind of blown away by it. It is definitely... Um, everything I hoped it would be. I mean, I wasn't hoping for anything specific when I was part of the original Kickstarter. It just, it seemed like a game or an idea worth, you know, trying to make. And I am really happy with what I got, even though it wasn't um, exactly what I was expecting. So yeah, I'm definitely pleased. And uh, I think if you guys pick it up and try it out for yourselves, you will be too. Um, that said, if you're not into, you know, true RPGs, you, you might not be interested in this. I know I have a lot of um, fans of strategy games on my channel because I do play a lot of strategy games. And so somebody who's into like Total War might not have a lot here for them. But if you enjoy like Skyrim uh, or The Witcher, uh, basically the way when my friend asked me what this game was, I basically explained it as Skyrim or The Witcher 3, but with um, more complicated For Honor combat. It's, that's the rough way to explain it, but it, it does cover it pretty well. Um, the wandering and stuff definitely feels very Skyrim and the, uh, combat is, I would say better than For Honors. It is, uh, probably a little bit slower paced at times, at least initially, but when you get better, uh, or when your character gets better and you unlock, uh, the perfect blocks and reposts and, uh, all the fancy combos and stuff, the combat can get very fluid especially against better opponents because you'll constantly be countering one another uh, and it you basically are constantly swinging swords at each other until one of you backs off because they're out of stamina. Um, and I've had some pretty epic duels where uh, it was like movie quality back and forth. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say about the game. So I'm going to leave it here because I don't want this video to go longer than it already is. But uh, thanks again to Danks564 for the uh, gameplay in the background. Um, thank you guys all for uh, tuning in and listening to me ramble. And uh, again, if you would like to see some actual uh, Kingdom Come gameplay on the channel, let me know and let me know what kind of stuff you'd like to see because I'd be happy to go through the main quest or um, even if you want guides on like particular side quests or certain things, um, I can certainly help you with that. Again, I've beaten the game, so I have pretty good familiarity with all the different mechanics and whatnot in it. And uh, I've done probably 90% of the side quests, so uh, I've gotten through most of them to completion, not failed them or, 
you know, gotten bugged out partway through. So yeah, I can probably help you out there. But uh, anyways, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys uh, back here maybe with some gameplay.